There had never been a national champion from a black school, Division I, in any other sport. And Howard is the NCAA champs. It was an unbelievable moment. I was so proud and so happy. They brought tears. First one was tears of joy. You don't know tears of sorrow. The National Collegiate Athletic Association announced that the Howard University Bisons have been stripped of its 1971 title. He felt violated. We are discriminating too much against foreigners. I am coming back next year to win this championship. NCAA or no NCAA. We're not going to will it back. We're not going to hope that it comes back. We'll take it back. We have to win. There was redemption. It was just after what many would call the apex of the civil rights movement. Two years absent from when Martin Luther King was killed. Howard University at the time was representative of the very best of the black power movement. The soccer team was a microcosm of that. It really is stepping into a cauldron of civil rights. We came from different countries, and for that group of players, those were not our experiences. We were now experiencing those things really for the first time. So for any young man to come to Washington from Trinidad, everything that we saw on our one channel in Trinidad and Tobago television was now unfolding right at our doorstep. Coach Lincoln Tiger Phillips earned his nickname as a legendary goalkeeper in his native Trinidad and Tobago. He had played against the likes of Pele and led his nation to an upset victory over Argentina in the Pan Am Games. But when he took the head coaching job at Howard, he was only 29 years old, unproven. Lincoln Phillips has not just energy, but he's a smart guy. He's, he's out recruiting. He's bringing in guys from the Caribbean, bringing in guys from Africa, tremendously fast, tremendously smart when it comes to playing together, but mixing that all into this really lethal combination on the playing field that took over college soccer. Speed. That was the driving force behind my coaching. Quick strike, counter attack. High pressure in your face. You have Nigerian, you have Ghanaian, you have Ethiopian, you have Eritrean. You have players from all over. And it, it gave us, I think, a rhythm that we played. When you went to our university soccer game, it became a party. We were all there cheering for these brothers, going against mostly all white teams. The coaches will tell them that these foreigners, they have more skill than we are. But if we call them names, it will throw them off the game and they'll get mad and get red cards and so on. So, Suniga is one of the words they threw. There were some fights along the way. There were some red cards along the way. It's all part of the process. I told my players, don't get mad, get smart. Put the ball at the back of the net and come back and say, take that from the nigga. Although we had a lot of discrimination. We look at St. Louis, all white, but the two teams, whenever we played, there was so much respect, no prejudice. St. Louis University, they'd always been the powerhouse team. They had won the championships almost every year. So in 1971, they were so sure that they were going to win that game. And the game was pitted as a black against white because that was the era. I think that game offered a platform. It was about sending messages and, and now embracing the role that we had. When we took the field, it gave voice to people in, in a country that sometimes needed a voice. Beautiful shot there by the Bison's goal. A nice shot to goal. 
That's the end of the game. Howard University has won. Howard is the new national champion because Lincoln Phillips is overcome with emotion. I was overcome because I knew who we represented. I knew black America was extremely proud of the moment. And St. Louis is dethroned as champions. I felt I would win four NCAA championships. After 71, I knew I was winning three more. There was no doubt in my mind. Things didn't happen that way in 1972, and a lot did start to happen as far as questions about uh, the Howard Championship in 1971, other schools protesting to the NCAA about supposedly the use of ineligible players. Towards the end of the season, we heard that the NCAA was going to sanction us and they're going to take away the 71 championship from us. The NCAA sanctioned Howard after two Bison players were deemed ineligible because they had not taken the appropriate entrance exams and two other players, the NCAA said, had exhausted their eligibility by playing amateur soccer in their native countries. Howard disputed both the accusations and the severity of their punishment, but arguing changed nothing. The landmark national championship, the first for any historically black college, was gone. The insignificance, the absolute insignificance of the so-called infraction it was bias, it was prejudice, we were discriminated against. The suspicion was certainly there that um, obscure regulations were being dug up out of uh, the rule book and were being thrown at Howard, which were not being applied to other colleges. These were misdemeanors and they were treated like felonies. In addition to taking away the 71 championship, on the eve of the 1972 Final Four, the NCAA hinted that it would suspend players from Howard's then undefeated team. Knowing suspensions were looming, Coach Lincoln Phillips opted to sit seven players whose eligibility was in question. In a rematch against powerhouse St. Louis, without its full roster, Howard would try to repeat as NCAA champions. We went down to the Orange Bowl, a depleted team. And we lost the game. And it's a goal for the St. Louis. A goal for St. Louis. They have swarmed the field. The Bisons have lost the game. What I think nobody was ready for in 1972 was that Lincoln Phillips, this quiet spoken, eminently likable guy, would stand up and say that they'd been discriminated against played against this entire wretched system of this society. Anytime they decide to get together to deprive any people of uh, what is due to them, I would say that the NCAA is guilty of practicing racism. And the players went quiet and I said to myself, oh my God, what are you saying? What are you going to say after this? St. Louis did not beat Howard University last night. They beat the remnants what was left of our university. At a banquet organized by the NCAA, pretty daring thing to do. From the original infractions, the NCAA again penalized Howard in 1973, banning them from postseason play completely. Without a common goal to play for, the cultural differences that were once the team's strength threatened to tear them apart. There was a lot of nitpicking and bickering. They even had little fights that I didn't know about, fist fights. You have players from all over, each of them different. We had Jamaicans, you had Nigerians. You have Ghanaian, you have Ethiopian. Jamaicans are intensive. They train the Indians, fairly happy-go-lucky. The Nigerians, when they speak, it, it, it sounds as though, you know, hey, you, give me the ball. It, they, they don't mean anything. But, you know, the Jamaicans say, who you think you're talking to, you know? <laughs> I'm not going to pass the ball to you again. I think in 73, what happened is you saw that without having the common goal of being able to try and win a national championship, things started to fray inside that team. Bringing all these cultures together, you really can't do it all as a coach. I was able to bring in a professor and talk to the players and calm things down. Don Basil Matthews, 
He was a religious man and educator, and he spoke about this triangle of blackness. A triangle of blackness. And that triangle, he said, started in Africa, went to the Caribbean, and was at its furthest point away in America. And they were that link that would link back to Africa with the kind of excellence that if they duplicated what they had done before, how the whole African diaspora could look on this one team as an example of the best that we can be. If there was a pivotal moment that led us into 1974, it was that moment. We all started to come together. In 1974, off of the probation, there was something almost poetic about the way that season unfolded. The entire season, they were dominant. They were just killing teams. We've seen some lovely soccer being played out here today. The goals for and goals against, 63 to six. Just a goal, nice new score. Still to date, the most dominant season in men's Division I soccer history, Howard advanced to the NCAA final. Reclaiming the championship they felt was rightfully theirs was only one win away. But to complete the journey, they would have to beat a familiar foe. It's a cold, bleaky day today here at Bush Stadium in St. Louis for this final of the NCAA for the year 1974. The only one team I'm afraid of, and that's Howard. If our attitude is wrong, we're gonna lose. But if our attitude is right, there's no way we can lose the game. But when we went outside there, we were a shadow of ourselves. Howard not looking settled as yet. The Bison seems somewhat flat. A misplay there by the Bisons. The Bain takes it on the chest, he gets it under control. He loses it. We want the back foot from early. We couldn't get control of the midfield at all, at all, at all. I was having the worst game of my career. I mean, worst. I was expecting Lincoln to take me off at any minute. St. Louis looking more aggressive. Kicks a shot, go St. Louis. We were lucky to have come into the dressing room, one goal down. That second half gave us some new energy. Howard putting everything into attack. They're moving faster to the ball. The Bison's looking a little more settled now. And we took over the game. The Bison's attacking with everything they've got. Down the field, taking the ball, the ball straight off to Tunde, Tunde on the ball. Tunde sets his man up, takes a cross. Head for the Bison's goal. Bison score. Bison score. And the Bison's are back in this ball game. This final was an epic final. St. Louis going up in this game, Howard equalizing, and then going into overtime after overtime after overtime. We went into four overtimes, and the overtime period was all ours. The ball hit the upright, the cross by. Beautiful shot off the bar, a header taken. It looked like a goal all the way. It was just a matter of time. So we go into the fourth sudden that period. Comes through to Bain, Bain still on the ball. Bain passes it. To to Davy, Davy on the ball. Davy trying to beat his man down the wing. Davy does, wings the ball. Goal Howard, and Howard is the NCAA champ for 1974. And the crowd on the field goes mad. The Bisons came here to Bush Stadium to take it all, and they have done it. We got it, we got it back. We just didn't win, we took it. I don't know what would have happened to many of us had we lost that game. There was just so much, so much reward that could come from it, but there was also so much onus that was placed on winning this thing again. There was jubilation, but I don't know if there was a dry eye in the house because it went way beyond just a soccer championship. This is black excellence. We came out unscathed because my players and myself, you don't hate white people for doing that. There are a lot of great white people all over the place. And the winning of the championship is great. But the struggle and coming out and the method of how we dealt with it 
folks need to understand that. In life, there are two things, controllables and non-controllables. Non-controllables, give it to God. Controllables, you handle it. That's what we did, and there was redemption. Looking around here, there are a lot of memories on this field. Our time was 40 years ago. Now it's your time. The rhythm of the Howard campus is now yours, and we're here to support it. Don't let us down. We're gonna look to carry that torch, Coach. Absolutely. Yeah. I'll be right here now. Yeah.